Hi, I'm Daniel Dix from FreeAccountingSchool.com, and today we're going to answer the following questions. What is the abbreviation for credit? What is the abbreviation for debit? Because I know you love abbreviations. Does debit always mean increase, and does credit always mean decrease? And then, why go through all the hassle of using double entry accounting anyway? Okay, so let's get started. Um, before we answer the qu all those questions that we're talking about, let's review the last example we did in the prior lesson so we can use this to discuss some additional concepts. Um, if you'll remember, we pretended that we owned a food stand and that one morning before we opened this food stand for business, we looked at the food stand and saw that we were out of ice cream bars. So we went to the food warehouse store and we bought 50 ice cream bars for $50 in cash out of this metal strong box that we use to keep all of our cash in. Okay? And to do the journal entry, what we did is we went over to an account called Cash and Strong Box, and we did an entry on the right side of the T, which is called a credit, if you remember, when you do an entry on the right-hand side. Then we went over to an account called Inventory and did an entry on the left-hand side of the T account, and that's called the debit. So entry on the left equals debit, entry on the right equals credit. And this entry showed us that we had $50 decrease in cash, and that we had $50 worth of inventory increasing in our business. Okay, so in accounting we do lots of debits and lots of credits. So when we're teaching accounting, we use abbreviations for the words debit and credit because we don't want to write out the full word all the time. And uh, the abbreviation for credit is CR, which makes sense because, you know, CR, credit, makes sense. But the abbreviation for debit is DR, which is kind of weird. But the reason, because there's no R in the word debit, right? Well, the reason for it is that in Latin, uh, the word debit, so when they, when they first started using the word debit, they did it in Latin, and the word in Latin is debere, which is D-E-B-E-R-E. -E -E. And so um, there is an R in the Latin word debere, which is debit. And so that tradition just kind of stuck to use the shortened uh, abbreviation as uh, DR for debit. Okay, so when we practice accounting, sometimes we want to write down journal entries when we're practicing, but we don't want to uh, go through the trouble of making these um, you know, big T accounts here because it kind of uses a lot of room on the paper and it takes a, little, uh, takes a while to draw. And so sometimes um, what we'll do is we'll um, write it in this form or we just say credit cash $50, debit inventory $50. So that's another way we could have written the same information that you see right here. That's the same thing as, as writing these in these T accounts. Okay, and, and there's also another way that we could have done it. We could have um, made columns here. So here's the debit column and here's the credit column. And for the cash line, you see there's $50 over in the credit column. And for the inventory line, there is uh, $50 in the debit column. So that's another way that accounting teachers will write debits and credits when they don't want to go through the trouble of writing out these T accounts. Okay, so in our example, we did a uh, debit to increase inventory and a credit to decrease inventory. But I want to give you a big warning. Debit doesn't always mean increase and credit doesn't always mean decrease. Only for certain types of accounts is that true. If you remember in our example here, um, both of these accounts that we used in our example, cash and strong box and inventory, are what are known as asset type of accounts. And with asset type of accounts, to show a decrease, you truly do um, do a credit, and to show an increase, you do a debit. But for other types of accounts that we'll learn about in other lessons, the exact opposite is true. And so you have to remember that debit does not always mean increase and credit does not always mean decrease. And the way that you're going to know this is by you're going to memorize the rules for different types of accounts in accounting. And we're going to memorize those rules in future lessons, actually coming up in the next couple lessons. Okay. Next question, why are we going through all the hassle of using double entry accounting anyway? I mean, it seems kind of complex to go through all the trouble. Well, there's two main reasons. Number one, it helps you avoid manual errors 
because you're entering everything in twice. But more importantly, double entry allows you to answer questions about your business much more quickly. Later, when we start making reports out of our accounting system, you're going to see that the double entry accounting that we do makes making these impressive and important reports really easy to do. And if you just wrote everything in a, um, using single entry accounting where you wrote everything in a list, it just wouldn't be possible and would take way too long. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up on YouTube or, make, or leave a comment or become a subscriber on YouTube. Also, if you want to check out more free accounting videos, go to freeaccountingschool.com.